Welcome to the HSP podcast. I'm Julie B. Elland, and we are recording live in the sensitive empowerment community, which is a positive alternative to social media for sensitive people. And you can learn more at sensitivecommunity.com. Today, we are discussing the importance of understanding our value as HSPs. And we are here with Willow McIntosh. Hello, Willow. Hi, Julie. Great to be here. Great to be here. Very excited to dive into this topic today. Yes, it was yeah, your so pick. Love to have you kind of lead us in and, and, and just a warm welcome to everybody that's joining us live from the community. So happy to see you guys here. We're going to connect um, at the end after we record. We're going to come together for those of you that are with us live and have a little chat after we're done recording today. So Willow, let us know what made you pick this topic and what's important to you to share today. Yes, thank you, yes. So the, the idea of value is something that has been a, such a huge part of my own journey and, and also one that I know has been very important in the people that I've worked with over the years. And it's an area that I feel needs a little bit of clarity in terms of what is meant by value and why it's so important, especially for us as HSPs. So it's kind of weird in a way how as human beings, we have to learn about our value and how sometimes we can not be in touch with our value. And when, when we consider that from the viewpoint of nature, pretty much everything else in nature understands its value and its role and its purpose and its place. Like it wouldn't make sense if you asked a tree what its value is. It's like, well, you know, I'm part of a network and I'm making oxygen and I'm doing my thing. What do you mean? Of course I have value. So for us as human beings, it's interesting how through our conditioning, we have to really come in touch with who we are and, and understand our value. But at the end of the day, the truth of who we are and be, literally being ourselves is our value. That is, that is who we're supposed to be and that is how we bring value into the world. So as HSPs, we have this interesting conundrum where because we feel different and because we experience the world in a different way, we process more deeply, for us to understand our value, we have to acknowledge and, and recognize that our perception is our value and how we process more deeply is our value and all the wonderful things that brings to the world. So when we're out of touch with our value, it can be very painful for us because we're not clear on our purpose, our meaning, our place, and our sense of, you know, sense of self-love. So it's an area that I think is really important for us to, to, to explore so we can understand what our value is as HSPs and the importance of really claiming that for ourselves. Yes, I love that. I wrote down what you said, being ourselves is our value. I like that. And our perception and deeper processing is our value. Willa, we came together, didn't we, as um, years ago now, with, uh, I could see that you had a really similar um, view of HSPs as I did in terms of really seeing the value, and which is what made me reach out to you when I read that article long ago that you had written. And I, I think it's really a beautiful thing for us to talk about that. Um, and it's been part of why uh, we've, been, we've been labeled the dream team by so many HSPs. Uh, listening to the podcast, love to listen to us. And I think it's because we both just have this really passionate outlook on really being able to see the value in, in HSPs, in sensitivity. And it's such an important thing to talk about. And I know for myself, it took so many years to, to really feel my value, to see my value, because I spent so much time being told by society, by uh, the, those around me that there is something wrong with sensitivity in some way. And I, I think that um, I'm really happy to see in the mainstream in general that we're seeing more um, conversations about the value of neurodiversity, for example, and that HSPs falls under that umbrella category, that we have these incredible gifts 
um, and that we don't want to try to make everybody the same in the world, right? We, we want these gifts. We, this is the reason why it exists in the first place. Exactly that. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it's, it's an intended part of nature. And, you know, as Dr. Elaine Aaron calls it, something that evolved for our, for our own evolution, for the purpose of our evolution, that we have this extra ability to see more information around us for our own safety in the prehistoric times, they, they reckon. And its, and, and its purpose has continued to grow within the human genome. So it's, it's something that is it's intended, you know, this is, this is a part of, of, of the natural ecosystem of who we are. And, and I had exactly the same experience too, is, is in my younger years and early adulthood, I really didn't understand what my value was. I tried so many different career paths and businesses and jobs. And all the time I was looking outside when what I really needed was already within me. And and through the embrace of that and understanding the neurodiversity of me, of, of how I perceive the world, how I perceive people and, and the abilities that that gives me was the greatest breakthrough for me. It's like, right, my value has always been here. Like it just needed acknowledging and developing and owning. Yeah, so that's something that neither one of us would have been doing this kind of work that, um, you know, the podcast is in 169 countries now. And this shows that, you know, we are everywhere. HSPs are everywhere. It's, yeah. it's in the top 5% shared um, and followed globally now. And that is an, a, a testament because our whole, I think our whole underlying purpose on this podcast has been about being able to share these gifts. And, um, and I think about how, you know, it is our default to kind of look outside. And if we've been raised as children to, to think that we have to change who we are instead of embrace who we are. Um, and that's a huge difference. And I think that part of why it's been so powerful for us to connect and talk and share our stories and our lives is, is really that, um, you know, we come from that kind of a background. We come from that background that, that told us that something was wrong with sensitivity. And it's such an important message to shift that, that there isn't something wrong with sensitivity. Our challenges come from the world not being set up for sensitivity, not that sensitivity is wrong in itself. And I think that we're even flipping that further to go into this paradigm shift where there's value. And, and we've seen that both of us in our work have seen when an HSP steps into that moment of really valuing who they are and getting to you know, experience that, that feeling, what comes from that? It's like the butterfly emerging from a cocoon, isn't it? And I know in your work, training HSP coaches that uh, you get to see and be a part of a lot of that, the, that blooming or that butterfly emerging. Absolutely right. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And it's, you know, and, and it's, it's such a key piece that you're, you're sharing here about the, the, these abilities and these awarenesses were not encouraged when, when we were younger, when we were, when we were children. And, and really, that's no fault to the people that were raising us, because there was just wasn't the awareness around what the trait was, and the fact that we were feeling and experiencing the world in a different way. And it is a revelation in, in, in high sensory people, coming into the awareness of their abilities for coaching and facilitating, advising, the teachers in us, the writers in us. It's when we embrace the fact that we are seeing things differently and that we're able to receive more data in the area of life that interests us. And that gives us a tremendous advantage in terms of what we're creating or how we are coaching, how we're leading. And I think the embrace of that difference is where our value lies. You know, it's, it's having the courage to, to, to recognize we are different. And, and within that is what the world needs from us. Definitely. And, you know, it's been, I've been seeing, so we've been talking about this in the community too, about the value of HSPs in different work settings, whether it's teachers, healers, medical mental health field, creators, uh, parents, there's just so much value in um, this trait that this brings, but because of the way things are structured, you know, for example, a teacher being expected to work the entire day, 
um, in a, you know, in a loud environment with bright lights and then having, <clears throat> you know, like a, a parent teacher conference after work that extends the hours and then expected to come back to work in the morning without the rest. And we, you know, we've been talking so much on the podcast about the need for, we have to um, find ways that advocate for um, our, our needs. And somebody in the community was talking about this, this overwhelm as a teacher and um, through the, just the strength that they received from being in the community, they were able to talk to um, the principal at their school and they ended up putting like this cover over the lights in the classroom right. so that it wasn't so, um, you know, so bright and so difficult with that fluorescent lighting. And, and I was like, that's really powerful. Like she, she was able to go to someone, talk about, you know, her needs and she was valued. That's the thing that we see a lot in HSPs when they actually do advocate for their needs in different settings, they're valued uh, for what they bring. I mean, I would want my children to have an HSP teacher uh, medical mental health provider for sure because of that ability that we have to you know we're so good at observant and intuitive and being able to um, take in so much information and feel what somebody else is feeling I mean it's such a, an incredible piece of that trait and and even as I'm sure you, as you work with coaches and therapists and things that um, you know the, the recognition that we have to do like different things too, bring in so that we have time for downtime. Maybe we're building online businesses and doing online courses in addition to um, spending time with clients, for example. So trying to diversify where our energy goes, finding different ways of supporting that sensitive nervous system so that we can bring out these gifts. And that's, that's really exciting that, you know, it's, we're talking about it. HSPs are starting to feel like they can, um, start to advocate for their needs and feel their value and imagine a world where we're doing that where we're like you know finding out what does each person need to reach that level of excellence to excel without the burnout yeah beautifully put absolutely and i think you touched on a really important piece here is that it has to begin at an individual level so in in the example of the teacher that you gave there it's her recognizing i i know that i have a great deal to bring to my role here and in order for me to function at an optimal level, the conditions around me need to be in a particular way. Because if I do go to events afterwards and I'm in the if I'm in the class all day and I'm on, under bright lights, it's not conducive for my optimal conditions. So, so that's claiming value at, at an individual level. You know, it's it's understanding that this is not about us trying to be like everyone else, trying to fit into the society as it works generally and feeling like there's something wrong with us when that doesn't work. We have to recognize that we are of a specialist nature. We're needed just as much as non-HSPs are needed. But in order to really claim our value, it's to take ownership of our needs and recognize that our needs support our value. So I think there's a, there's, a, there's a shift we can make at an individual level here that begins with recognizing, what is it that I love to do? I'm here to do something important. I'm an HSP, that means I'm important. So, so it begins there, I think, in, in truly owning our value. Yes, uh, and owning the value. That's such an important piece of it too. Because I think that that's, a, I feel like that's often the first step of, you know, being able to advocate for our needs is to own our value, <clears throat> excuse me. And I was, I, I had a consultation with, uh, um, with somebody recently about, um, they were somebody that was just excelling at the top of their field. And we see this a lot with HSPs that actually, we, and we have research that shows this, that with the right support, somebody can absolutely excel and often excel, um, HSPs often excel. <clears throat> and, um, but part of the issue that he was experiencing is that he would kind of work, 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 work. And you tell me, Willow, if you, if you recognize this in yourself too, because I recognize it in myself. It's kind of like, go, 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 because you're so passionate about what you're doing. And then boom, burnout, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and you know, this is what he was experiencing. It was like, he was recognizing, like I kept hitting this wall of burnout. He's like, I'd want to go in my room and just like close the blinds. And I would just be out of commission. And you know, he wanted to find a way, how can I continue to excel without the burnout? And that is, right. that's what we're looking at because we, 
absolutely can. We just have to make sure that we're taking care of that nervous system. So you, you, you have, uh, you resonate with that story too? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And it, um, yes, like if I, I, I've learned now that if I just push, it doesn't work for me. You know, it, it actually, my productivity gets affected in that way. And it's when I, when I shift into recognizing that the way in which my mind and my, my nervous system works, it's, it's kind of a different, it's its own arena, really. And when I honor that, and I think, actually, what, what is, what is the, the, the change that I'm making and, and the best way that I can really make an impact in what I'm doing? then it kind of levels me up in the awareness of myself. And I tend to experience this new flow that works much better for me. So in other words, if I try to work like a non-HSP and just push really hard, it doesn't actually serve the way in which I am here to operate. It doesn't actually align with my value. So it's about recognizing there are, there are particular avenues that, of service that I can provide and by, uh, by owning that and recognizing that and staying with that, I'm much more effective and it works much better for my body. Yeah. And I think we should also add that what we're doing as HSPs, like say in six hours and what we're accomplishing in six hours is usually far advanced than and, and more than like when we're in that state of flow. And I bet you, you know what I'm talking about there too. It's like when you're in the state of flow, I mean, the way that our brains work and process and being able to take in all these details and the creative, especially that creative flow that's so beautiful in HSPs, when we step into those spaces, you know, what we are doing in that six hours is so much more often it might take non HSPs weeks to accomplish what we're doing in one day. And that is, that is what I see a lot in this population. I see you're nodding your head, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, so when I get that, 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 that thing happening in me where I'm pushing and driving, I'm getting exhausted, and nothing's working. If I actually just stop and get on my bike or go and get in the sea, then suddenly I, I can see the layers of everything that I'm looking at, like things just sort of fall into place. And I get the feelings. It's like, oh, I need to do this. And that then gives me a, a clear direction. It's not about necessarily driving. It's about being highly effective for six hours in alignment yeah. with my intuition. And then things work for me. Yes. And I, I wanted to mention that because I know a lot of HSPs, you know, it's really important for us to be productive. And we think like, oh, if we go to the sea or if we go to the forest for a day or we spend a weekend in the in the woods or something that we're going to somehow that's going to make us less productive. But in fact, it actually makes us more productive. And, and what I see over and over when I'm working with HSPs who, who really want to excel on high levels is I always ask them the question, like when they're experiencing that cycle of you know, extreme productivity followed by burnout is this, um, it, I always ask them the question, when's the last time you were in nature, just nature by yourself? And usually it's like, oh, it's been a while. <laughs> they say <laughs> it's been a while, you know, and I've learned, and I think you and I have talked about this before, and we both learned this over time that, you know, to prevent burnout, we need to spend time at the sea, in the forest, in nature, because that is exactly when that creative flow happens, when we're able to um, find that, you know, balance that nervous system and, and be careful because a lot of HSPs, you know, we all are guilty of this. We love learning and taking in information. And a lot of HSPs will tell me, oh, you know, I do go for walks, but I'm also listening to um, something that I'm learning about at the same time, like listening to a podcast or listening to something. Um, but we're still taking in information when we're doing that. So it's almost like so many of us are not naturally giving ourselves that rest to take in, um, it, to stop taking in things for a little bit every day to have that time. And I mentioned that because that's when all those gifts will arise when we really are taking that downtime every day and allowing ourselves to have that quiet time, not taking in information during those times. That's when you will see your gifts really soar, your creativity soar. And that's when you feel your value, I think. Um, so it's yeah. sort of that balance, right? Yes, absolutely. I, I can, that's exactly my experience too. And, and the nature piece is really interesting. We, we seem to really recharge in nature as HSPs. It's a, it's a very, very special experience for us. 
And I think it's interesting in a sense because we are, we, we, we're in the stillness that we experience in nature and that immersion that we experience. I think we are then really connecting with our nature, our inner nature in that sense. I think we're very good at recognizing that there is this flow of nature out of, outside, there's a flow of nature inside. And in that stillness, as you say, we get to experience our gifts and we, we feel more at home in ourselves. And I think it's that relationship that we need to build, the relationship with that sense of truth and sense of self within us. Because within that, there is the value, there is us being ourselves, experiencing ourselves. And by calming, recuperating, we're then able to be of, be of service in alignment in whatever we're doing day to day. And that I think is, is how, we can, how we can get used to this sense of value by being ourselves, but by resetting in order to feel ourselves. Yeah, imagine a world, Willow, where HSPs are doing this, that are finding that balance and really stepping into that, you know, that emerging, those emerging gifts and that value that is there. I, and I, we are seeing it more and more. I mean, I think it, it's such an important thing to talk about. I know we're, we had a parent in our community was talking about how um, they had not had alone time in many, many years, actually, to raising children. And I know we see that a lot. Um, and they got inspired by other HSPs talking about how powerful it was to spend a weekend alone in a cabin in the woods. Um, and they went and tried that. And like, they spent the first day crying because it was like this incredible release and connection to self and just really finding yourself again. I mean, we do tend to be quite externally focused on everybody else's needs, but to have those moments of stillness in nature, um, I, I believe that we find our value. And then it followed uh, after, the, after the crying, it followed up that they were, I mean, they were really, it was incredible to them how they felt after having that experience. And I think that's why it's like in, in all my classes that I'm teaching and stuff, I'm always, I actually will have that as an assignment. It's like, I want you to go to the woods for the day by yourself and spend time with trees or, <laughs> or water, something trees or water. And, you know, especially for people that haven't done it for a long time. And you know what I'm talking about, Willow, that feeling that we get to, we have such a connection to nature that is a beautiful part of this trait. One of my favorite parts of this trait, actually, and I liked that you were talking about kind of this connection to nature that we have um, and how we we see the value so naturally in nature and each and we are connected to nature and we have that value, too. And it's just such a beautiful thing. Yes, absolutely. Yes, that, that's 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 the that's a very important insight that we that we understand the value of nature so deeply. Like we you know, we understand how everything goes together amazing conversations you know with hsps of, of what it's like for them to be in nature there is there's a lot of profound things that happen to us and and i think we are able to understand the greater balance of things and and how nature things in nature have their place and how we have our place and so so th so rather than trying to fit in or you know giving ourselves away too much or you know, trying to trying to be like a non HSP. I think it it's it's so important for us to really to to really feel into what matters to us and and how our intuition guides us to want to serve in particular areas. We we tend to be very very passionate people about particular causes in the world. You know, we, we're very caring about the environment, about human rights. We you know we're very passionate about the potential of people. And, and these are all insights into the area of life that matters to us. And that helps us to then recognize that our value is within that, you know, that, that calling to want to make a change in these various areas. Processing more deeply in these areas is, is deeply, is seriously needed. And by following these breadcrumbs, I think we're then able to truly understand our value. That was certainly how I piece things together. Yeah, and now you help HSPs do that, which is such a beautiful thing. I know that um, as a creative, intuitive person myself, like when I hire somebody for my team or project, 
um, and and I and they're an HSP. I oh, one of the first things I tell them is like I I want you to like I often don't deal with like deadlines for creative people. I actually don't do well with deadlines either. It's almost stifling. But the sense of encouraging the creative process and the intuitive process, being able to like. Um, what's more important is that you're taking care of your self-care needs, that you're um, having that downtime, and then you're going to see that creative flow happen. And it happens every time when people actually do that. And it's always like this really beautiful thing that they'll say to me. It's like, wow, I didn't get to work with somebody that would sort of allow this creative process. And that's how it works, right? Like I, I do the same thing. It's like, if I feel like I'm a little stuck or wondering what my next um, project might be, or I'm looking, I'm kind of seeking in terms of what is important, like what the world needs, what HSPs need. I, I tend to plan to have a, a down day, like a downtime day where I'm not doing, I don't have a project. I'm not working at that moment. I'm letting myself spend time in nature. I'm letting myself have a lot of stillness. And then what happens that it's like I call them downloads, the download yeah. process of creativity happens. And um, and you must do that a lot in your work when you're working with HSPs, helping them sort of develop these their own coaching, um, you know, entrepreneurs and helping them because that once you're helping them, they're out there helping others. So it's like this ripple effect. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yes. And, th and those downloads are, are such an important part of who we are. You know, I think that we have this, this, this unique perspective that we have as a result of processing more deeply. It is a huge, uh, important area of our value. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's recognizing, um, you know, for instance, in your case, the ability to be able to download ways in which you can empower and, 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 and help H HSPs to thrive. That, that's such a great example of how your unique perspective utilizes the information that you gather, seeing the bigger picture, opening to your intuition, and then creating these amazing processes and resources that you create, you know? It, it's, it's, it's that unique, that, that uniqueness of you that brings such value into the world because you own it and you're living it. And, and I think that's the opportunity that all of us have as HSPs is to understand that the way in which we're seeing is, is there's only us in the whole world that can see and feel the world in the way that we do. And our voice needs to be heard. Our perspective needs to be heard in, in whatever area matters most to us. That's a beautiful thing to think about, Willow. And, and so true. Like when I first started out um, in my businesses, I... I think I, you know, it's so common for us to go into places of like, what, what should I do? What would they want me to do? Um, but honestly, everything that worked really well came from when I decided to just be myself in the world. I was like, I'm just going to be myself and I'm paving my own path. <laughs> and the path wasn't already laid out um, because the paths that were already laid out just didn't fit. And so I think we both really encourage that with HSPs, the sense of be yourself. If that means you're paving your own path, beautiful, because that path probably is needed in the world, right? Yes, exactly that. Yeah, very well said. Absolutely. I think that's the opportunity that all of us have as HSPs. Is we're not supposed to be fitting in. We're supposed to be bringing a new perspective to things. I think that's almost you know, one of our, one of our core purposes here. And, 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 and trusting that the world will hold us when we embrace that and take a leap of faith in, in really understanding what that is and how we can serve through that unique perspective. I think it's there for all of us. And I think as HSPs, and when we really get the support that we need and really go for that, I think it's the most freeing experience and the best way to understand our value. Yeah, definitely. And Willow, we have so many community members who have taken your coaching program and are, are loving it. And one of the things that comes up a lot is that you're able to really see their value. And oftentimes you're one of the first people to do that, to see their value, to identify where their value is the strongest. And it's a, a very powerful experience for them. And, and they've been talking about it. And I know, um, and why don't you just let listeners know, we're going to put this in the show notes too, um, and, uh, about how to find you, how to work with you, um, and, and to be able to 
you know, find that value inside of you. You're such a beautiful soul that can do that for people. You've done an amazing, I've witnessed it too in some previous events we did together where you were able to really um, help somebody find their value. So I think if somebody's wondering about their value uh, in, in the workplace or like with the, wanting to do coaching and wondering where to specialize, things like that, because actually we need people to specialize who like when they are themselves, right? When they're actually being themselves with the experience that they've had in the world and show up in that way, show up with their own value that's, that's so meaningful to others. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think it, you know, it's, it, it's part of my mission to help as many HSPs as I can to understand who they really are and just how important they are in the world. And, and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's as a result of my own journey and my own struggle through that, but it's also how my own high sensory ability works. I, I can see and I can immediately see who HSPs are. It's just a part of how my, my, my makeup works. And many of the people that I train actually have a very similar ability to that. Um, and, and the program, I, you know, I know many of you know this, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a series of foundations that I realized were present in all of us as I worked with HSPs over the years, one-to-one. -one. And the program was created on these foundations that helps us to understand that we all have a natural area of fascination that is actually served by the way in which we're processing more deeply. And that's connected with the cause that we have. There's something underneath all of it that really matters to us. And, and when we're able to become conscious of these things, bring them out of remission as a result of not getting the training that we needed as, you know, in our early development, we really begin to recognize how we are intended to be of service in the world, which is exactly what the program is outlined to do. And many of us want to become coaches, which is why it's called the coaching program. But also people come through the process with a, with a very different purpose that comes through their hearts. And then and the process will support that, whatever it is that comes, you know, that, that's intended to come through you. So, um, so to find out more about that, it's highsensoryintelligence.com is the, is the place to visit. And I will be able to help you get a, an insight into how this will work for you. Because as an HSP, you have a gift. It, it's, it's just, it's there. And it's, and it's quite literally as a result of being, being able to process more deeply. And, and the value of that and the purpose of that is all there to be revealed and enjoyed. Yeah, what a beautiful thing. I think it's a great matching what we're doing, how you're able to train HSPs in these ways. And then we have our HSPs and heart-centered business group within our sensitive empowerment community. And, and then we have a, we, you can get on our directories so HSPs can find you who need you and get referrals and write for the HSP um, blog, maybe even be on the HSP podcast if that's something that ends up working out. So I like that the kind of, we kind of just sort of naturally had this fit and we end up having um, a lot of your coaching participants come into the community, come into the business group. And it just feels like a really nice sense of support because what we're doing is if we can empower HSPs in these ways, and just, I mean, talk about, we, I, I often love this concept of the ripple effect, but that's exactly um, what it is, is this ripple effect. I believe in this by empowering one HSP, one HSP rises, we all rise. And I really believe that. And I just get to see um, the confidence and light, the bright lights that are coming out of your coaching programs and then getting listed on the directories. And then they're talking about starting to work with clients because they're getting the referrals. Um, I, I really love that whole circle and just this sense of like true support um, that, that we're doing for HSPs. And it's just a beautiful thing. Is there anything else you want to make sure we um, talked about today before we said goodbye and we connected offline with our um, or after we record, we're going to connect with the HSPs that have joined us live. Is there anything else you want to add? Um, I, I, I think that I think the piece that we often say is that, you know, if, if you're listening to this and you're feeling alone, feeling isolated as an HSP, feeling you're not understanding your value, you can't figure out your place is is to get in touch either with Judy's community or with me or with with anyone that's providing resources for HSPs. 
when you get together with other HSPs, that feeling of finding your tribe is just life changing. And very quickly, you'll begin to understand that there's nothing wrong with you. In fact, the opposite is true. And the path begins to awakening to the truth of who you are. And I think it's so important that we do that for ourselves, no matter where you are in your life stage. Yeah, being together, that's the magic. I mean, it really is. It's very normalizing, very validating. That's what we're seeing. And I think it's just, it's such an important piece of our wellness. Um, So you can find all the things that we're talking about, joining the community, checking out the podcast episodes we've done at sensitiveconnection.com. We're going to put the links in to the show notes about what we've talked about today as well. And I want to thank all of our podcast listeners for sharing episodes, getting this into 169 countries. Let's keep going. Let's have a goal. We're going to have all, all the countries covered so that we know HSPs in every country is listening um, and we're supporting them in these ways. So thank you, everybody. And thank you, Willow, for, for being with us today. And it's going to be fun to, to just chat after we're done recording. So thank you, everybody. Sending out love to all our podcast listeners. I hope you're taking really good care of your beautiful, sensitive selves out there. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.